everyone and welcome to the Chrissy B Show on this lovely sunny day. I have to my right the lovely Excel and you'll be reading the news shortly. Indeed. How, How are you, Chrissy? my darling? I'm good, thank you. It's good to have you on the show. Good to be here as usual. Thank you. Shall we tell the viewers what else we have? Indeed. Okay. So we have our fitness tip by Jane Rath and she'll be showing us some exercises that we can do outside and without a mat. I'll also be speaking to teacher and special educational needs expert Polly Walker. We have our weekly fashion tips by Cynthia Gregoire. I'll be showing you a great place to visit and I'll also be answering a question from a viewer. But let's get to the news first without further ado. Indeed. Excel, over to you my love. Well, I, um, I came across something that I thought was um, slightly on the serious side, so I thought I'd start off with that today. Oh dear. Well, it's not too bad, it's not too bad, but it's something I think that needs to be spoken about. Um, an artist has portrayed three Disney princesses being kissed by their fathers as part of a campaign to inspire victims of incest to come forward. Mm. Yes. Okay. He's a Middle Eastern um, man and he uses the pseudonym Saint hoax after he learned of the abuse experienced by a close friend mm. and so he used that to sort of um, sort of illustrate it if you like and get you know sort of get this out there he said he learned that one of his closest friends was molested by her father when she was seven and it took her 14 years to be able to share the traumatizing wow. experience and it really shocked him and so <coughs> he said this needs to be out there he says he operates under St. Hoax just to protect himself because mm -hmm. he, um, he's had some personal attacks as well due to the obviously controversial nature of the topic. Um, according to him, he had approached prominent charities, but they, he didn't receive any response. He thought he could get involved in the sort of family unit of certain charities, but none, you know, no one really wanted to um, launch you know, this theme. So he decided to launch it on his own. So he has his own website where he's put these pictures and he says he, you know, he, it's quite, the pictures are a bit sort of, um, it, it's, it's one of those things where you look and it shocks you at first, but you just think, wow, yeah, gosh, that's, you know, that's wrong. Mm -hmm. And one thing that I have to say, um, I, I actually pleased, I was actually pleased to, to read was that he said, I received an email from a girl thanking me for the project and telling me that she decided to report her father after seeing oh, the posters. Great. So even if it was just for the one person, I think it was well worth yeah, it. Yeah, and I'm sure it's going to help more than that. Absolutely. When it is a, obviously an unconventional way of doing things, yeah. but sometimes sort of the shock factor exactly. helps. Because he, he has girls that are going through it or yeah. have been through it. They, they're sort of thinking, I can't talk about this. It's yeah. too shameful for me. Yeah. And it's very, it's a very hard thing to talk about when it's your own father. Absolutely. Obviously Absolutely. abuse of any kind is difficult, but yeah. when it's your own dad, it's you obviously, you, there's some girls that are like in catch 22 situations. It's my dad, I still love him, yep. but he's doing this to he's me. He's obviously doing this that yeah. is wrong. And yeah, so he's like, what do you do? Yeah, but I think so that actually, I think the use of the Disney characters kind of gives it that whole, you can reach it on any level. Yeah. It's not yeah. like, you know, like, people, real people, if I can say that, and you can sort of see the, oh my gosh, yeah, this is, so it's very, um, it's been, it's sort of like a mixed reaction, but it's been quite, yeah. um, been quite interesting. Yeah. Okay, yeah. let's see how that goes. But um, on to um, slightly weird news now, as I'm wont to do. <laughs> a clinic has opened in China after scores of football fans fell ill in an ailment that has now been dubbed, guess, <laughs> World Cup <laughs> Syndrome. <laughs> Yep, it's real people. Football mad fans have complained of a loss of appetite, anxious, anxiety, chronic insomnia after staying awake to watch the live games from Brazil where the time difference is 11 hours. Oh gosh. The We're World gonna... Cup Syndrome Clinic, <laughs> which oh. operates in Chengdu Number no. 3 People's Hospital in Chengdu City in Northwest China, is treating fans for everything from lethargy to paranoia brought on by healthy and irregular sleep. If you want to be cured from the World Cup syndrome, get some sleep, people. <laughs> record the football. It's and oh, hang on, watch no, hold, it on, hold on, hold on a minute. You can't record the football. It's not the same. Excel. Oh my God! You really? It's not. I'm the sorry, same. I really am not a football line. fan, so you can obviously see I'm not well, impressed I'm not either, or but sympathetic. I just know that when it's the World Cup, you do not want to watch that recorded. You have to watch the live matches, no matter what time that is. We just have to kind of pick and choose which ones you really want to well, watch. Well, exactly. You can't watch every game, though. This is what I'm just like. Someone, someone said here. I couldn't, I was gutted when Suarez 
always bit the Italian guy. I don't know who that is. <laughs> and he says, I just cracked. I couldn't eat. I couldn't concentrate. I felt my world was falling in. And basically, it's only a game of football. Exactly. You said it. You were falling ill over a game of football. There was one year that I really got into the World Cup. I don't know if it was, was it 90, was it 92 we had one? 90. Ah. You're asking the wrong person, I've love. Got so, I really got into I don't know what happened. Mm -hmm. Like, the whole family did. My dad, everything. And I was following all the matches. And I had all the posters on the wall and everything. And I was, re I felt really, like, upset when it all finished. Oh, my gosh. I was really, really? sad when it finished. No. Like, something's missing from my life. So I, I can understand. I'm not even that much of a football fan. So I can imagine how people feel when, obviously, it's their country doesn't get through. Yeah, it gets it's comes too out. much, yeah, it is, it is. I do, I do, I do something that I watch once in four years. The Olympics. Oh. <laughs> That's it. And Not a tennis fan either. Mm. No. I love the strawberries and cream that yes. you drink every <laughs> year. That's about, that's about it, really. <laughs> Sorry, love. <laughs> So, I mean, basically, the doctor said, you know, the doctor that is in charge of the clinic said this branch of medicine was new territory. So now we're getting World Cup syndrome. Interesting. Mm. Well, um, on to um, yeah, more even weird news. There is a woman who actually sounds like a man. And her name is Norma. And um, the poor woman has difficulty simply cancelling a membership over the phone. Aww. Because the person on the other side of the line says, no, you're not a woman, you're a man. She says, no, I pro and I, I, when I watched the video, I, was, I, was, I felt so bad for her. She sounds like a man. Mm. And apparently when she calls her daughters, the daughters say, hang on, mom, I'm going to put you on speaker for everyone to hear. Why? Why, daughter? Why? Oh, but the woman sounds so much like a man. Something happened? Or she she just... has, yes, she has a voice. What, what is it now? She has a... Yeah, enlarged vocal cords. So she literally sounds like, like yeah. even deeper than that, like really like a man. And she says she's been the butt of jokes for years. But the thing is, she just takes it all in her stride. She says, well, I've got a sense of humour, so people want to laugh at Thank me. Thank goodness it's for that, fine. because that could really depress someone, couldn't it? Tell me about it. She laughs yeah. it off. But I really do hope she does laugh it off and not just laugh it off in the public and go away and yeah. cry at night or something. Because I mean, I know, I know someone that's got like quite a masculine voice, mm -hmm. but the reason she didn't, she wasn't born that way. She tried to kill herself. Mm -hmm. and she drank bleach, so obviously Ooh. it destroyed all her, her yeah. vocal cords and everything. Look, thankfully today, you know, she's turned her life around. She's mm -hmm. doing really, really well mm -hmm. with everything. So she got help for what she was going through. But mm -hmm. obviously the, the voice is... Has but now. she she actually uses that to her advantage to talk about her past and you know what she went through exactly. and all the things that happened to her and she uses that to her advantage now mm. so mm. yeah it's a I think but yeah well it's, I, I mean I think she's tried to have operations or stuff I think she, they've said to her there's no cure really she's tried and tried to use medicine in one way or another but it's not really it's not really worked mm. but she's happy yeah. appar apparently it so. seems so hopefully she can still see the light side of it really yeah I actually quite like husky mm. voices like, yeah. especially when you're in media, I think radio and TV, I think it sounds nice. This is the... I love, I love Barbara B, our producer's voice. I know, she has this She's the one that does that little, that little bit where, you know, don't forget to subscribe to the Chrissy B Show, which you'll be hearing in just a moment, because we're going to go to a break <laughs> soon. Yeah. We've got to think what time for another one. Yep, we can talk about one more. Um, I have to say, um, this was something that put a smile on my face, because um, Amy Adams, she's an actress, popular Hollywood actress, she um, was getting on a flight within America from Detroit to Los Angeles, and she traded her first class seat for what they call coach, it's all got economy seat. And she traded her first class seat for a coach because a soldier, she wanted to swap places with a soldier. Mm -hmm. And she's had fond memories of having grown up because her dad was also a soldier. And when she saw, it was um, apparently Delta Airlines. And when she, they arrived at the counter, saw the soldier waiting for his place. And so she said, oh, you know, whispered to the, the, the checkout people and just said, look, you know, I just want to, I want to be able to swap, swap places. Oh, and so she nice. took herself to economy and sat next door to um, a reporter who actually ended up oh, tweeting wow. about it <laughs> and said, Amy Adams, Amy, um, what's her name again? Yeah, Amy Adams is in coaching, you know, da da da. So it was quite a big thing. And then by the time, of course, when she landed in LA, everybody <laughs> was there to take pictures of her, like, oh my oh, God, wow, Amy I Adams, Amy Adams did something so wonderful. But she said she just did it because she said she's always wanted to do it. And she has fond memories of her dad being a, being a soldier. And she yeah. grew up on, um, 
on a military That's base. That's nice to do that, well. especially when you've paid for your first class seat and then you just offer that to someone. Exactly. Else. It's I think it's I think it was fabulous. So someone said um, I used to admire Amy Adams, so now I've, I've you know she's upped she's upped her ante. There you, you go. Know, See, you do a good turn and it comes back round. Absolutely. To smack you on the bum. <laughs> <laughs> That's really or, nice. Or stick a camera in your face. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, Excel, thank you so much, my darling. I know you've got more, haven't you? I yeah, have got, got more, I know. We'll but save that for next time and we'll have the photos as well to show, right? Indeed, indeed. <laughs> All right, so do stay tuned because after the break, I'll be speaking to teacher and special ed needs expert Polly Walker and we'll be having our tip from Jane. So don't go away. Don't forget to subscribe to The Chrissy B Show always aiming to show you the happier side of life you can find us on youtube facebook and twitter welcome back now before i speak to polly let's take a look at this fitness tip by jane on exercise exercising outdoors without a mat Hi guys, it's Jane here with your fitness tips um, all about the great outdoors. As you can see, I'm out in a park and uh, making the most of the nice summer weather. It's a little bit chilly, but it's, it's good for exercise. Um, what I want to talk to you about today is exercises that you can do outside without a mat. The obvious things you can do are one, walking and running, but there's loads you can do for toning and strength um, without a mat where all you need to do is put your hands on the floor as well as your feet most people probably wouldn't mind that so uh, I'm going to crack on and show you a few things okay so as you can see I'm on wood here but you could do this on grass or on a country path wherever you wanted to do it so I'm going to show you a few plank exercises the basic one is your basic plank like this so I've got my shoulders drawn down away from the ears I'm making sure that my back doesn't dip down like this so I'm going to lift up and tuck underneath. Now even if you just did a few planks interspersed into your running then you're getting some upper body work as well as your legs and your cardio. So say after every 10 minutes run you could hold a plank for a minute and do some other exercises and carry on. So this in itself is a great exercise if you do just a static plank. You could add a little bit of cardio work to it by doing something like this. So if you run like this, this is hard work. So if I did this for one solid minute, I'd be nicely out of breath and I'm getting some lovely work in my shoulders as well. And all I've got on the floor are my hands and my feet, which is great. So let me show you some more plank exercises. If you pull your knee up to the outside of your elbow like this, it really works into your obliques and those are the muscles in the side of the waist. So you could put some of these into your program. I really like these. They're called mountain climbers. An alternative to this is to bring the knee across to the opposite elbow, like this. Still working the same muscles, working the shoulders. And you can bring the knee straight up into the chest like this. And I can really feel this now in my shoulders, my arms and my tummy. And the good thing about it is, if I'm putting this in the middle of a run, my heart rate is not dropping because this kind of exercise keeps your heart rate going. So you could jump back up and go straight back into your run. Okay guys, so enjoy your outdoor fitness and I'll see you next time. Thank you so much, Jen, and I have tried those exercises and they're really good for you. But now it's time to meet Polly Walker. Hello, Polly. Hi, thank you for having me on the show. It's great to have you here. Thank you. Now, we've got a few things to talk about, haven't we? But we let's have talk indeed. about your, your background, first of all, because you, you were a teacher before. That's right, yes. How, how did yeah. you get into that and why, why teaching in particular? Um, I originally trained as a primary school teacher. Um, I, at secondary school, we were required to do um, a workplace um, experience. Mm -hmm. um, and the things that really appealed to me were either working with children or animals. Oh, that's <laughs> um, nice. And I eventually secured my work experience placement at my local primary school mm -hmm. um, for two weeks, which I, I thoroughly enjoyed. I, um, 
I felt that it was something I was naturally good at yeah. um, and it inspired me to go on and take a degree in primary education which is what okay. I did. <laughs> and then you moved on from teaching, what did you do next? I did, um, well I moved into um, special educational needs so I taught children and young people that were at risk of and had been permanently excluded from their mainstream schools. How did you get into that? Because that's quite a specialist area, isn't yeah. it? How did you get involved in the first place? Um, it when sounds more, a lot more challenging. A lot more challenging, yeah. yes. <laughs> um, when I was studying for my degree at university, I worked um, on a part-time basis tutoring young children um, who had autism. Mm. Um, so they were all preschool age, probably around about the age of three, mm. and the idea was that we were teaching them skills that would enable them to then function appropriately in a mainstream school setting. Mm. Um, that I, I found that a lot more rewarding than just mainstream school teaching, not that I'm in any way <laughs> saying that that's not a rewarding yeah. or very worthwhile profession. Um, but yeah, that, that's what prompted me to move into special educational well, needs. What are some of the challenges though? Because obviously it's harder. Obviously yeah. all teachers, I mean, they're doing, you know, doing a great oh, job. Whether yeah. you're, wherever, whatever, you know, children you are teaching. But mm. what are the challenges that you face there? And I think the um, difficulties? probably the main challenge would be, um, that I experienced would be re-engaging young people in education who'd, you know, had bad experiences within mainstream schools that mm. you know been permanently excluded or been out of the school system for some time for whatever reason um, so trying to find something to motivate them or to hook them yeah. back into education yeah. to, to make them enjoy learning again or to even ignite their love of learning in the first place mm. that would probably be why are they excluded is it because um, teachers don't understand their background or how to deal with them or how what are the, the reasons why, why possibly they get excluded? in some circumstances quite often it would be challenging behaviors creating right, okay. um safety issues within mm. within the school you know um yeah, there's all sorts, sorts of things yeah all sorts of things <laughs> now you're now a mediator what, what, right. does, what does that mean exactly um so a mediator is somebody that facilitates a conversation um, between two parties that are in conflict. Right, okay. Putting it very basically, um, that conflict could be two neighbours that are warring over a fence or a, a tree, their parking uh -huh. space. Okay. It could be um, work colleagues that have um, their relationships broken down, their communications broken down and they're unable to function in the workplace any longer. Maybe one of them's been on long-term sick leave. Mm -hmm. um, it could be a family circumstance, so separated parents, divorced parents. It's um, like you resolve arguments then, really. <laughs> Basically, wow, yeah. that, that must be really like <laughs> challenging as well. Yeah. Really challenging. You really go so, for the challenging I stuff, do, don't yeah. you? What do you love most about your work? Then um, I think it's enabling people to have um, their say, to be able to be heard, to empower right. them to to try and resolve their own conflicts. Um, yeah. Really, to to give them the opportunity to put a conflict situation behind them and to move forward. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now back to the, the special educational needs, mm. Polly. Now I know there's maybe some parents watching that they maybe ha are having a hard time with their child or sure. children if they have, do have special needs and they don't really know how to handle it. Maybe they haven't spoken to someone about mm. it. They feel like, you know, they're quite down in the dumps because they say, you know, why my child, why couldn't they be, you know, they use the terms, why couldn't my child be normal? Mm. They say these kind of things. What, what advice would you give to these parents? Um, I think my the key advice really would be to talk to somebody about it, talk to a professional, a teacher, a doctor, yeah. a health visitor, an educational psychologist. Um, they would be able to signpost them to other sources of support that might be, I don't know, a support group of other parents that say so they've mm. got people to talk to about their experiences and their difficulties, the, you know, the challenges they're facing but also to point them in the direction of professional support as well and, and perhaps give them some ad advice for what they can be doing at home. And yeah, because so like, I, I know maybe some of them would say, oh, you know, it's not worth even trying to teach my child anything because they're not getting it. But there are, the, you can yeah. be taught, parents There's can be something. guided, they can be taught, and the children as well, if they've got the right support, they can Absolutely. learn, yeah. Yeah. just yeah, like the other children, right? And it's, you know, it's, there's a lot to be said for sharing those experiences with other parents because you know, we all have difficult times that, you know, it helps when we talk to others and hear that they've gone through similar experiences and, mm -hmm. you know, a, sh a shared problem, a problem shared is a problem halved. And is, <laughs> Sometimes. That why, is that why you wrote your book as well? Because I know you're, you're releasing um, your book soon. Yeah, I, I wrote a, um, a children's book that has got a theme around self-esteem. Um, oh, okay. Some of the children I worked with had very, very low self-esteem, as you can imagine, mm -hmm. um, and it prompted me to, to, to want to do something um, that could be used to 
I don't know, promote discussion with them um, at home like and in the classroom. Is it like a fictional book? No, it's a story. Oh, a story, okay. <laughs> it's about four creatures. All <laughs> oh, right, okay. Yeah. Oh, that um, sounds nice. And that's due to be released in a couple of months. Oh, so brilliant. Very exciting. Well, all the best with that. Thank you very and much I think indeed. it's great what you're doing. Thank really you. Like, you can see the caring nature in you anyway, which Thank is great. You. <laughs> Thank you so much, Polly, for talking to us. Thank you, Polly. Thank you. Brilliant. Okay, so after the break, we're going to be having Cynthia Gregoire on to talk fashion, and I'll also be showing you a great place to visit. And also, this is a question that I'll be answering later on that we had from one of our viewers. Let me just find it here. Okay, <clears throat> this one's from Shai, and she says, I'm in my early 20s, and my partner wants to get married, but I'm not sure. I say this because I don't believe either of us are as mature as we think we are. When do you know when you are ready and is there any such thing as the right time? What would you do, Chrissy? So I'll be answering that later on, so do stay tuned. Don't forget to subscribe to The Chrissy B Show. Always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back. Now, before we speak to Cynthia, if you're looking for a good tourist attraction to enjoy with someone visiting the UK, or if you fancy getting out with a friend or your partner to see London in a bit of a different light, then perhaps you should try something like this. I'm here with Lauren today from the London Eye, and obviously this is a very famous tourist attraction. When was it actually built? Well, it was originally called the Millennium Wheel, and that's because it was opened in March in the year 2000 to celebrate the turn of the millennium. The people who actually designed the EDF Energy London Eye are a husband and wife team uh, of architects, Mark Sparfield, and they had a vision to create um, a kind of space where normal people could be lifted up above the city and they could get to see it from a bird's eye view, and it would be free to everybody to go on to. And why is it such an important tourist attraction? Well, it's in a fantastic location um, on the South Bank. It means that you are lifted up high enough to see amazing views of the capital, but also that you're close enough to see the intricate detail on, for example, Big Ben is, is a great example of a really nearby iconic um, historical landmark as well. The great thing about the London Eye is that it is a moving view. Uh, you get to see a different thing at different points around the experience and also at different times of day, different weather. Uh, it's just, it's always an ever-changing experience. But also there's lots of other things you can do on the eye. For example, every hour we do champagne experiences where you can enjoy a glass of bubbly. Uh, we do chocolate tasting, weddings even. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, there's lots of different things to keep people coming back. It's not just uh, the same experience again and again. For London Eye virgins, what can they expect on the day? <laughs> Well, uh, each rotation takes 30 minutes and it doesn't stop, it keeps turning all day. So um, after the 30 minute experience on the eye, whether you want to have champagne or just have a normal um, look at all the lovely views, um, there's lots of other things to do on the South Bank. We've got Sea Life London Aquarium just around the corner and also London Dungeons if you want a little bit of a scare. Okay. I think I prefer the, the Sea Life, <laughs> the Sea World. All right, Laura, thank you so much. All right, so now it's time to talk to the lovely Cynthia. Hello, my darling. Hi. How mm -hmm. are you? I'm very well, thank you, Chrissy. <laughs> We've got lots to get through today, haven't we? Yes, we do. We have a full schedule today. So um, actually, I'd like to start by talking about the outfit that I've styled you in. Mm. Um, we have Chrissy in this beautiful uh, sheath dress by Nicole Miller in electric blue. So if you just actually look at the detailing, um, if you've caught my last segments on um, the dresses that flatter different bodies. This one is good for all kinds of bodies and it just looks fabulous. I've paired it with um, Sam Edelman pumps, which you said are very comfortable. They're so comfy, these shoes. I don't that's know great. If get a close up of them, but I, I think they're, they're just really the right size of yeah, heel. Do you think that's why? They're really comfy. That's they're really amazing. Cool. And a statement necklace. <laughs> Um, myself, I've actually chose to wear um, acid yellow, which is actually not the easiest colour to wear. Um, and I've paired it with a asymmetrical black skirt. Um, this is uh, done by Vivian Westwood. So I really believe that this top and this bottom was uh, meant to go together. They're just really kind of like off symmetrical, mm -hmm. the draping, everything really about good. it. So this would be more of an evening look, but right. uh, yeah. 
Okay, um, what I was going to do before I go to my rail is just reflect a little bit up, um, on uh, London Collections Men. So we've just okay. come off Men's Fashion Week yeah. and uh, it's kind of special because London didn't always have uh, a Men's Fashion Week. It's just in the last couple of years that they've Which is really good because men need it too, don't they? They, they need a bit of help sometimes do. in the wardrobe department. <laughs> I think so. And I think a lot of men are complaining that, you know, men's style is like an endangered species almost, that it's just, you know, they're, they're always taught to tame their inner peacock and they, they love style as well yeah, so yeah. It, it's a good thing. Um, I was fortunate enough to attend a Pretty Green show yeah. and uh, that is like a brand that was founded by musician Liam Gallagher in uh, 2009 and he was celebrating the five-year anniversary of the brand so mm. it was very special that I, I got to be there. Oh lovely. Yeah I took some yeah. footage and I'd like to just share that with you just a little bit about the brand before we watch the video so that you you have a bit of a background. Uh, the venue they chose was quite special it was Gibson Studio so it was mm. like set in a music sort of background so the, a lot of the inspiration for the brand comes from the mod Italian fashion and the Beatles right. and that kind of 1960s kind of paisley and crazy prints so that's the right, kind of okay. vibe um, it was very special his, his brother Paul was DJing and it was just a really nice venue and you enjoyed yourself I can tell <laughs> I did I did and I want to say a special thank you to Lou Cannon who um, very nicely take took good care of me in the front row and also thanks Lou for taking care of us in there for us definitely <laughs> and also to my uh, cameraman um, uh, Alex Lucci from uh, Jake Photography. Thank you very much for, for the video. So without Should we take any, a look? Yeah, without yeah. any okay, further ado. Let's take ado. a look at the video then. So there was a little bit of footage there. Did you enjoy that? Yeah, that was really show? good. <laughs> they are a little, they are exciting, especially if you love fashion as myself. I would like to point out that that was the spring summer 15 collection. What we do is we, they show them a year in advance. Oh, right. So in June, okay. they show spring summer 15 in January. They'll show so we got the sneaky year. peek already. We did. Yeah. <laughs> well and as you could see, there was a lot of that um, geometric prints and a lot of that influence yeah. that I, I had. And they look good, about. didn't they? Yeah, the they're amazing. So yeah. <laughs> Anyways, um, the rest of today I'd like to talk about um, just uh, beachwear and just today was the hottest day of the year, yes. I think it really <laughs> it was, was and I was dressed very inappropriately and I <laughs> sweated unnecessarily and Aww. I think that we need to know how to dress for the hot weather and that beach weather. You just want to have as little as possible. Mm -hmm. I think that's what it's about, right? Just wearing... Uh, minimal but still looking glam. Really good, yeah. So what I've seen uh, so far this season is these drawstring dresses. Yes. Yeah. And you can see the, the colors that they're in. We've got white and we've got this beautiful... Love that color, this, yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. And this drawstring just allows you to make the dress look uh, very different. And mm. also think footwear. If you're going to pair it with, you know, a stiletto, you can dress this up and you can also wear you know, Converse runners, or you could yeah. wear, you know, even what you're wearing. Mm -hmm. um, the footwear really changes the look. And uh, look for fabric. It's nice and cool as well, the fabric. Absolutely, this is, um, this is rayon. Mm -hmm. And you'll find that rayon is, is very um, cool in the summer. You could go with one of these, this onesie. So it's all about like one piece, right? Yeah. So just easy, you pack it in your suitcase, you could wear it many different ways. There we have a very similar yeah. blue. Um, That's a lovely colour. Yeah, well. that one's in my young, yeah. fabulous and broke. We did try to get Excel in that earlier, but didn't manage it. Next time. Down there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, I used to have something like that when I was three. What do you think about this? Like, I'm not really digging this Terry material, but some people really I like it. I used to it. wear that as a child, <laughs> not on the beach. There you are as an adult on the beach. I suppose you could put it with some heels. It might I'm not quite sure about that, but it is out there. I'm just covering it. <laughs> 
Um, right, the denim shorts. Shorts are a big thing, right? You can pair them with your bikini top. You can throw our next item over top here. Seeing a lot of this color this, yeah. this season. Yeah. So your you favorite denim out. shorts. It's the color, right? Chrissy, what do you think about these caftans? Um, they're, they're quite nice. I know Excel really like loved them. Love them, didn't you, my darling? She's going to come back later. Oh, that's really old. Together here. Cool. Never mind. No, they're really nice. They look nice and cool and they are. Summery. They're made of linen and, and cotton. And what I love about them is just the the kind of like boho sort of hippie look that they've got. Mm. You could throw this over a bathing suit. You could wear it with denim shorts. You could put a vest underneath. Yeah. Basically, it's just like a quick cover up, you know, yeah. solution. So and you look stylish on the beach. Ah, it's all about looking clown <laughs> on the beach. Um, if you want something a little more uh, chic on the silhouette, go for one of these ruched dresses. So they look quite long, but you can see that actually this mm. would sit on your hips here. And right. then you can adjust sort of where that fits. Again, look at the colors that they're coming in. It's really that time to wear that yeah. pinks and the oranges and that kind Definitely. of thing. Yeah. Um, I love this one. <clears throat> Excuse me. This one here, stripes. Stripes are a big trend again this summer. and They always um, come back in the stripes, don't they? They do. Point. Whether they're horizontal or vertical, they always seem to be around. Mm. I love this one because of the pockets. And again, we've got that drawstring detail that just allows you to move the shape yeah. of the dress. And I think that's really, really versatile. This one is quite cool. T-shirt yeah. or dress. That one nice with a long necklace. It could be both, right. Not long necklace, uh, belt. Would you wear that as a t-shirt or would you wear that oh, as actually. a dress? Either I think will be good. So it depends how you dress. put it, how you accessorize it. Yeah. yeah. I think that this, this piece has a lot of potential in white. Do you think you can get through the rest in one minute? I so could. Watch shall I hold a few up already? <laughs> <laughs> Let me have, hold them ready. <laughs> All right. We have um, just longer shorts cut for this season. Um, we've got the, the print in silk. <laughs> this is where she starts to <laughs> fast forward. <laughs> um, we have linen and again, a drawstring dress, not the shorts. Uh, what do we have here? We have linen tops. Linen tops are great to stay cool in and they cover you up, but those yet they're nice. a bit sheer, so they're great those. for evening looks. Pair them with heels. And we have this tensile dress. Um, I don't know if I can get through it in a minute or less than, but the, <laughs> the fabric or whatever is very, uh, it's synthetically but natural. It's mm -hmm. natural but synthetically made. So right, it's, okay. look for that, it's tensile. And it's this last one is a very pretty one. White lace skirt. I mean, Beautiful. it's an absolute summer essential. That is lovely. It is a must. So Simply, we did it. We got through everything. Well done. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> you did so well. Okay. I'm looking forward to seeing you again next week. Yeah, uh -huh. absolutely. Definitely. Okay, then. So that's it from Cynthia for this week. We'll do tune in again next week because she'll be here with us again. Now, do stay tuned because after the break, I'll be answering a question from a viewer. And though I said goodbye to her, I didn't mean to. Excel's going to be back with us with some more news. So do stay tuned. Don't forget to subscribe to The Chrissy B Show, always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back. Now it's time to answer this question that Shai sent in and she says, Hi Chrissy, I'm in my early 20s and my partner wants to get married but I'm not sure. I say this because I don't believe either of us are as mature as we think we are. When do you know when you are ready and is there such a thing as the right time? Well, Shy, I was in my early 20s when I got married and, you know, everything's going really well. But you talk about maturity. Now, if your boyfriend is the type that can't be bothered to get a job and, you know, is at home all day lounging around playing computer games all day, then honestly, I wouldn't marry him right now until he showed some sort of responsibility because at the end of the day, it has to be the two of you working together. But other than that, if you love each other, you're committed to one another, you've made sure that you're both compatible, you get along, then I don't see the, the issue. You don't have to wait, for example, till conditions are absolutely perfect, for example, you know, everything's perfect financially because conditions will never really be perfect. But maybe, you know, better than um, sometimes than others, but if you're quite financially stable and, you know, things are going well between you, then, then I think there's no problem. But you do ask, when is the right time? Well, I believe the right time is when you're ready to sacrifice for each other and make each other happy. And I think if you concentrate on making each other happy, then your marriage will go really, really well. But obviously it is up to you. Uh, but for me, I will just, I will just go for it because I think marriage is a wonderful thing. 
Now, if you have a question for me as well, if you're watching at home and you have a bit of a dilemma, you're not sure what to do, and you'd like to know what I would do if I were in your shoes, you can email me on chris at chrissybshow.tv. Like, so we have some more news, don't we, my love? Sorry Indeed. I said goodbye to you before. I forgot you were going to come I, back I, on. I thought, I thought you were kicking me away. I, I really wasn't. I just forgot. Oh, well, it's glad that you brought me back. That's fine. <laughs> Did you have more news, don't you, for us? I yeah, do you have, have more news. Yeah, so, oh, yes. right. I always come prepared for you, Chrissy. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, how long does it normally take you to do your... Um, just shopping, if you're going out food shopping or clothes shopping, how long would you say? Um, just... I'm pretty fast actually. I, I do my shopping online, my grocery shopping online. Okay. I normally, I don't really like walking around the shops too much. Yeah. I normally have a good idea of what I want to buy. I don't window shop. Okay. That's the thing. If I'm not going to buy anything that day, then I won't actually go into the shops. Uh, okay, interesting. Well, a young lady, a few days ago, popped out for some last minute shopping and came back. <laughs> having given birth outside of oh. a Primark <laughs> in Birmingham. Oh no. She was obviously in her, you know, due date time and all that. And, and it just couldn't wait, could it? It just could not. She was literally... Was it baby clothes at least? Well, I don't know what she went to buy, <laughs> but um, I think she must have got to the shop. I don't know if she actually... It doesn't actually say if she went in to get stuff yet, but she was in the shop and then she started having obviously having contractions ready the baby ready to come out and so now the child is literally like i think it was over in 10 minutes the child being born wow. it doesn't say if, if it was her first or anything like that but you know the girl must have thought mm, primark i want to go shopping <laughs> so um she decided to come out early and join her mother in the aisles because she literally took 10 minutes she was in front of the shop so and in front, she, on the pavement, she gave it, birth? On the pavement, oh she, was, she gave birth was on the pavement. Was anyone there to help her? Well, the staff, was, fortunately, you know, some people were quick thinkers, and they actually provided um, sheets and blankets and towels and all that for her to lay on. And it was passers-by. Oh, can't who imagine actually, giving know, birth on the street. How I embarrassing. Know, I know. I suppose I you don't care when you're in that. You don't really care when you're in that. You just like, get it out of me. So I've heard, by the way. So I've heard. Um, <laughs> but the new mum, she was on her own as well. Yeah. She wasn't with anybody. So you can imagine, it must have been slightly frightening as well. You know, you're kind of like thinking, okay, maybe I might get somebody when it's time. Because you have all these lovely, I've heard people having birth plans and all that. It doesn't always go to plan, really. You didn't actually birth plan. That's quite plan. a story to tell the grandkids, right? Tell me about it. It's like, yeah, I was born in front of Primark in Birmingham. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Oh, the um, the ambulance. I mean, like I said, there, there were um, there were towels and sheets put on the pavement for her mm. to you know to make her comfortable. And helpers actually then gave birth, help and put the baby onto her arms, and everybody was cheering. <laughs> A crowd had gathered. Now someone must have filmed this. Come on. Well, I has anyone filmed this? Well, I won't be surprised. I bet you if you go on YouTube, you'll find it. But the thing about it is. Um, Fortunately, some people held up the sheets as well to make like a oh, curtain, nice, so yeah. it wasn't all like on pride. display. You thank do want the your Lord. Privacy, don't you? Well, exactly, because I think it's just a bit too like. Mm -hmm. But they held up sheets, and then she gave birth, and by that time, then the um, ambulance service turned up. So yeah. a West um, a West Midlands ambulance service spokesperson has confirmed that mum and daughter are doing okay, and. Um, any freebies from Primark for them? Well, this is the thing, because apparently, it, I don't know if it's true, but apparently it's an urban myth that if you um, have a baby in M&S or mother care, you get free gift vouchers. So, um, oh, I don't know. Oh, maybe she was trying to do that. I know, she must have been on the way to Marks and Spencer's and she got sidetracked <laughs> by the offers in Primark. <laughs> Darn it. But, um, well, well, there are reports that she... I don't think you should have said that on TV, because I can just imagine all these pregnant mums about to pop their baby. When you're eight and a half months pregnant, <laughs> take a stroll. Just go if to If the there's an M&S and a mother care, take a walk between the spend, two of them. Spend the time in M&S Cafe, <laughs> just waiting for that baby for those contractions, and don't move. Just stay there. <laughs> I mean, they're going to love us now. Um, <laughs> but of course, some cheeky claims are that the baby girl will be called Pramani. Oh, no. Don't do it. Don't be like the man and named his daughter Facebook. <laughs> well, moving on swiftly. You know, last week I told you about the girl who um, we named Goldilocks because she um, fell asleep in the house she went yes, to burgle. Yes, what's she done this time? Right, well, it's not her this time, but it's a, it's a fellow American. And um, he's got himself arrested now because he went into the house and um, picked up a few, you know, picked up some cash, credit cards and a watch. And what did he do after that? 
He checked his Facebook page on the man's computer. Oh my gosh. What a... <sighs> that's, that's, that's just I ridiculous. I have no words. I really have no words. <laughs> but anyway, um, but the, the thing about it is he checked his Facebook profile on he checked whatever he wanted to check. And but he forgot to exactly. He left his he left his page on display. So the homeowner returned and he thought like, oh hold on a minute, there's something wrong about you know what's going on here. He obviously noticed that he'd been robbed, but then he saw the the profile on his screen. And so he then pulled it up. The the, the victim was um, James Wood, and the name of the thief or alleged thief is Nicholas Wig. He, who's he's 26 and um, he put up Mr. Wood then put on Mr. Wig's status and said watch out for this guy he's a thief so he then left his phone number so people who had information on him probably you know yeah. to say you know his friends should sort of grass him up or something but then he actually got a text from Nicholas himself <laughs> the thief and arranged to meet him so he could get back some of the things he left in the man's house so of course he is said is he for real this is it this is this Seriously? is this is it this is like dance of the year i'm sorry dance of the year and um he ended up arranging to meet him so he could get his clothes back and other things he left in the house and of and course was he was going to return the man's stuff back and of course mr wood was very clever who also called the police and the police arrested oh, him at their I'm meeting sorry. point so he faces up to 10 years in prison and a $20,000 fine if he's convicted. <laughs> and in fact, Mr. Wood said, world's dumbest criminal. <laughs> I don't think I disagree with no, you. No, I think he's right. Should give him a little trophy. Seriously. Well, last bit, can I squeeze one more in? Yeah, you've got a few minutes still. Lovely jubbly. Something old, something new, something borrowed, something blue. <laughs> Leave my dress alone. Well, these, this couple, unfortunately, had their rings stolen. Oh. So they ended up having to um, have an alternative. Because their rings were stolen the night before, so they didn't have time to, to, to replace it. It was literally the night you before the wedding. You can't use Coke um, for rings anymore because they don't do those big round rings anymore. Right, OK. So what else do you think they could have used? Plastic bottle ring. Mm, keep going. Um, elastic band. Close. Children's ring. You're kind of Wash warm. Up. You're kind of warm. Haribo sweeties. Oh. Oh yeah. They, oh, that's so cute. They had. Eat them afterwards. Well, this is it. This is it. They actually used their Haribo rings to seal the wedding vows in oh. church. And then they said, look, we wanted, the lady, the bride said, look, we wanted to make light of it. We weren't going to let this dampen our day. We just wanted to just carry on and not even bother about that. But then when they got to the reception, it started to get all warm and sticky on their hands. <laughs> so instead of cutting the cake, as is traditional to do, they ate their rings. Oh. Lovely. Because they said it was getting pretty sticky and it wasn't starting to. So but those are the kind of things that you never forget. And exactly. It's a talking point for exactly. You know, they'll they'll talk about it to their children for, for all yeah. time. It yeah. will get passed on. Good on them. I'm Absolutely. glad you didn't let it spoil your, your big day. So, I mean, you know, they still went off for their um, 10 day honeymoon to Thailand afterwards, but they've put out a notice to the um, pawn shop owners in the area to look out for their rings. I think oh. they were quite distinctive as well. So, hopefully, they do find them. You have said Shame that on, on you. You shouldn't have said that on TV now because now. Well, now the thief's going to know. Well, I suppose, well, the thing is, I probably know. Well, yeah, okay. True, yeah. yeah. All right, never mind. <laughs> got time for one more, Excel, I think. One more? Well... No, I've got a minute. No, never mind. Let's just wrap up the programme. <laughs> Can you yeah. save it for next week? All right, then. <laughs> All right. Thank you, my darling. You're now I'm really welcome. saying goodbye to you because we're going to leave. <laughs> we're finishing the show now. Certainly. All it's right. been a pleasure. Thank you, my love. <laughs> okay, so we have reached the end of today's show, but if you do want more information about any of our guests tonight, for more information on the show in general, you can visit the website chriscbshow.tv. And if you'd like to get in touch with me personally, you can do so on my email, chris at chriscbshow.tv. Maybe you have a question for me, or you maybe have a story that you'd like to share, please do send your emails to me, and I promise to answer all emails personally. So do have a wonderful day, and we'll see you again next time. Bye-bye for now. <laughs>